If your Highline anchors are connected to stones as small as mine, you might die. Therefore, you shouldn't Highline. No, Cameron, I need an intro. Intro. Shit. Uh, okay, well, you shouldn't take your rock quality for granted. Learn all about that on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx, and welcome to the Bolting Bible, where we're going to talk about rocks, because you really ought to know what you're screwing before you screw it. Did you know that bolts don't hold your high line up? The rocks do, and you really ought to know about these before you install any bolts. We broke apart, get it? Three easy to remember rock categories. Hard rock, soft rock, and layered rock. Now it's important to understand basic rock biology. There's minerals, and then there's glue, or cement. You have hard minerals, like quartz, that's Yosemite granite. That's not Yosemite granite. And then you have things like feldspar, which is also a hard mineral, but it weathers easily. And depending on what glue you have, or cement, uh, it whether or not it sticks together. We were in Mexico, rigging that line super good enough. That's where I get that from. And it had, it was granite, it was great hard crystals glued together by shitty clay. So you can see here how it crumbles easily, so rigging a high line on that was pretty tricky. Now hard rock is generally formed underground, magma that's cooled under the earth, because it cools off slowly. Now if it cools off quickly, the crystals may not be as close together, therefore it's not as hard. For, uh, lava rock, for example. Now Yosemite is polished granite because it is exposed to weather, and a place like Joshua Tree has really rough granite because it almost never sees any rain. Now you can also have sandstone that is considered hard if it's quartzite sand and quartzite cement, just like the New River Gorge in West Virginia, which if it is cemented together well, then you could use something like a sleeve bolt because it's hard enough. Otherwise, you start to have to get into the glue ends to make sure it's grabbing the entire rock and doesn't blow out on you. Now layered rock is interesting because it can either come in soft or hard forms, but being that there's layers, you kind of have to grab the whole sandwich with glue. And so that's really important to know before you put any kind of bolt in. When you have a hard enough rock, you can use just about anything you want, with exceptions. Uh, this is a sleeve bolt, and it technically doesn't have to be that long, even though every time I install a bolt, granite or not, I always use something about this long. Sleeve bolts versus wedge bolts, cost perspective, really no difference. So I always install, I only buy sleeve bolts for mechanical bolts. But anyways, you can put these close to the edge. Not that close to the edge because that's not even in the rock. Um, but in Yosemite, you can put uh, the bolts right near the edge, whereas uh, softer rock, you got to put them pretty far back. Now with hard rock, you don't have to use glue-ins, but I have chosen to use glue-ins for a number of reasons, because with people taking these on and off, the threads can get damaged, and people can steal the hangers, and you can actually put static rope directly into the bolt, rather than needing a quick link attached to this, because you can't put rope directly on a hanger like this. The problem with glue-ins is that you can't turn them once they're in, and they cost a little bit more and take a little bit more time to install. So you gotta weigh out all your pros and cons and what you're trying to accomplish if you're establishing a high line and installing bolts. Now, softer rock is gonna have very little to no quartz. Not like basketball quartz or measurement quartz, but mineral quartz. And depending on the cement that holds it all together will determine how strong it is. And then there's stuff like limestone, which is a bunch of little dead marine life cemented together. And that also depends on the cement but it's generally porous and so it weathers and decays over time becoming soft rock. And then volcanic rock is also soft because of the gases that form in it when it's cooling, creating that little Swiss cheese look that it has. And all that porosity can make it more prone to weathering, which over time can make it weaker. Now the softer and softer a rock gets, the more important gluons become because they grab the entire rock rather than a wedge bolt or a sleeve bolt just spreading out the metal plates only really holding it at the bottom of the hole. Now the softer your rock is, the longer you will want your glue-in. There are glue-ins that come longer than this. 
I rarely install bolts into really soft rock, so I only buy sizes like this. And the softer the rock, the further back your bolts need to be. Now the Fruit Bowl in Moab, Utah, where they have the GGBY Festival, Slackline US with Jerry Mischewski from Balance Community have installed Monster Crux bolts in the sandstone and replaced all the old bolts. Not only did they use a longer Monster Crux bolt than this, they had to put them pretty far back. And that's where the old bolts are as well, because the softer the rock is, the further back from the edge you will want to be. That does add a layer of complication to rigging, but uh, you don't want to die. Now, layered rock is just like it sounds, layered. So if you use a wedge bolt or a sleeve bolt, it's just gonna spread out at the bottom and crumble that thin layer of rock. So you gotta use glue to grab the whole sandwich of rocks. And sometimes it's gonna be pretty long, even if it's hard rock. Now, as exciting as minerals are, if you wanna learn more about them, go read the Bolting Bible. It's on slackademics.com. So what is the scientific way of knowing whether or not a rock is hard? You use a rock density detector, also known as hammer. You should hear a high ping, 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 if it's hard. And if it's not, it'll sound like a thud. Now, in Yosemite, there's a lot of hard rock, but for some reason, there's this spot on the rostrum, the rostrum side, that uh, when we were putting in glue-ins there, I couldn't figure out why the old bolts were not, you know, where they naturally would seem to be. You hit it with the rock and it sounds very hollow right there. So we had to scoot back a little bit to put it into hard rock. You could have a hard rock, but then it splits after you drill a hole through it. If you put your holes too close together in line with what looks like the natural grain of the rock, you could perforate it just like a check stub when you tear off the end of the paper it just has a bunch of holes in it if you do that to the rock you could make something that was hard weak and size does matter we drilled some bolts into some rocks that were buried in the ground in iceland because it's pretty hard to dig a dead man anchor and uh the rest of its dirt so <laughs> we drilled what we could when we were tightening our wedge bolt it uh felt like it was getting looser the more we tightened it. We realized later that the rock had split and it's opening up more and more. So that wasn't uh, the safest line we ever rigged. As you can see here, if a bolt is too close, it could cause a crack, creating the entire rock to come off. And if the rock comes out or off, you're going to die. Now, I don't feel like I should have to say this, but I'm going to. Pretend this is a big mountain. And this is a boulder sitting on that mountain. I personally don't recommend you bolt this rock um, if it's on a, on a hill because, or even wrap it and rig it all natural because you could pull it down the cliff. You know what's worse than having your high line fail? Having the rock you're attached to roll off the cliff while you're still attached to it. So to recap, make sure the rock is attached to the earth well that you don't fuck it up with a bolt, and that you're using the right bolt that it'll stay in the rock. Now, none of this is actual rocket science, but if you're going to put in things that other people are going to depend their life on, and that's something that's probably gonna be there longer than you, or at least it should last that long, then you should at least take some time to understand what you're putting it in. And as much preparation as you do, there can also be unknowns and you could have some sort of failure. Therefore, you shouldn't highline. Hey, thanks for watching, but don't be an idiot and go think you can go bolt some anchors you and other people are gonna depend their lives on after watching a nine minute video about it on YouTube. Make sure you watch our other Bolting Bible videos and then you'll be an expert. Now, this might not be a luxury for you, but if you can make a small effort, or preferably a big one, please find someone who knows what they're doing about bolting and have them do it with you the first time you go out and try it. If you don't have that luxury, please practice at home on your patio or your neighbor's patio if they're not looking. That's a joke, don't troll me. And make sure you know what you're doing before you go out and fuck up nature forever. Now, if you have input to add to the Bolting Bible, please let me know because this is a community effort. 
I basically am the guy who organized a lot of people's information. So message me if you have something I should add or take away.